entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Great shooting. And suspense. I sure wish I could ride like that. Well, there's nothing to it, Della. All you have to do is spend eight years practicing for eight hours a day. It's real simple. Can you picture my father letting me do anything away from him, even for two hours a day? Unless it was teaching Sunday school. Well, you should be glad your father loves you so much he wants to protect you from anything which might hurt you. Well, if he does love me, he's got a mighty funny way of showing it. Haven't we all? Right now, Tag thinks Annie's a regular she-male tyrant because she told him that if he wanted to buy uniform for his baseball team, He'd have to work for him himself. I'll say it's work. Fifty cents for putting up a whole hundred of these. <laughs> what events are you entered in, Annie? Just one this year. Trick riding the last day. You going? Well, I, I don't know. Not that I wouldn't like to. Real top hands in that show, Della. Some of the best in the state. There's Tex McCarthy and Larry Johnson, young Dan Carter. Annie, if I meet you in the morning, will you take me to the rodeo with you? <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. Thanks, Annie. Bye. Bye. Tag, you're supposed to be working. Big deal. We're out a dollar's worth of shoe leather just so as I can earn 50 cents. <laughs> now that Della Forsythe's going into a real pretty young lady. She sure has, Lofty. Won't be long before some young man will come along and Mr. Forsythe's daughter will be missing somebody or other. You better not tell him. You two seen my daughter anywhere? She left here not over a minute ago, Ab. I told her to wait for me outside the blacksmith's shop. I don't know what I'm going to do with that girl. Fun. It's all she ever thinks of. My God. I don't believe it. I'd almost given up hope ever seeing you again. Well, father or no father, you will from now on. Well, not here. I'll see you tomorrow. Annie, have you seen my papa? I've been looking all over for him. Have we? 
I'll teach you to hang around rodeo shows. Mr. Forsythe, Della's been looking for you. If she'd stayed where she's supposed to, she'd have had no trouble finding me. But, Papa, I... Never mind the butts. This time, you're going home and staying there. Lofty, when the Forsythe first moved to town, didn't we hear some stories about Ab's wife on a rodeo? They weren't just stories, Annie. She actually left him and joined a rodeo. Knowing Ab, it's not hard to believe. And he treated her just like he does Della? Everything had to be his way with no concern for anyone else's feelings? Apparently so. Anyway, when this rodeo hit town that was owned by the husband of a woman she knew, she just left Ab and joined up. Then what? Well, then about three weeks later, there was an accident. She was killed. Mm. Well, that explains a lot. But it still doesn't make him right in the way he's bringing up his daughter. You going someplace? I'm going out to tell Zilla I'm not taking her to the rodeo with me tomorrow. I think you're being wise, Annie. Remember that old saying about innocent bystanders? I just hope Della does, too. see her about me, I ask. Well, I told her I'd take her to the rodeo with me tomorrow. You'd do no such thing. Take a girl that age to see a lot of saddle tramps cavorting around because they're too shiftless and worthless to do an honest day's work? I should say not. I'm competing in the rodeo, Mr. Forsythe. Does that make me worthless, too? But, uh, of course not, Annie. Uh, I know you. Hmm. The others are all wrong because you don't happen to know them. Is that it? I know them, all right. They're a shiftless lot with no more morals or ambition than a prairie dog's got wings. The rodeo business has its bad apples, but so does any other. Storekeeping, ranchers, doctors, lawyers. I'm not going to argue the matter, Miss Oakley. Neither am I, Mr. Forsythe. I rode out here to tell Della I'm not taking her with me. Just the same tag, but I think you better save it for the cash customers. I tell you what, though, if you make more than five dollars while the rodeo's in town, I'll match every dollar you make. Gee, thanks, sis. But you don't have to do that. I know. Just why I want to. You know, I believe in trusting youngsters with responsibilities and letting them know you trust them. Uh oh. Looks like you got a little competition, boy. How do you like that, Chubby? He copies everything I do. Oh, well, I don't care. Let him. Competition's the spice of life. <laughs> If I were in your boots, young lady, I'd skedaddle out of here before my father found me. I'm 18 now. I'm of age. And I'm going to stay. Well, if your father should catch you in the grandstand, he's liable to put on one of his scenes again. Well, will you take me with you then, Annie? Please? 
Well, at least that way I can keep an eye on you. Come on. Tucson Carney riding dynamite. <laughs> Save your alibi for someone else, Tucson. I saw what happened. You're getting so you couldn't ride a merry-go-round nag. That's a fine way for a wife to talk after I almost get myself killed for you. Well, don't get yourself killed for me, sweetheart. You haven't earned enough prize money lately to buy you a half-price funeral. It's all you'll ever think about, isn't it? Money. Yeah, especially since we haven't had any. Better go ask the boss for an advance. The local? Him give anybody an advance? And he never will, either, if you don't go ask him. Rush Harper, riding Black Plow. of a donkey. I'd have turned you on my knee and patted it. I'll sponge you up. Oh, mind you just keep your hands to yourself. Take it easy, friend. Youngster said he was sorry. Well, who asked you to butt in? Mind your own business. And make him miss my business. And you're asking for this. <coughs> Dry yourself up some more, friend. You're still wet. All wet. Idaho Jones riding cyclone. <laughs> But wait right here for me. Ten weeks of Texas rain. Is Della here? She is, and I didn't bring her. Where is she? Right where I left her. I'll show you. Believe me, Della. I wrote every week for months. But then when you never answered... I, I... believe you, Dan. I believe you wrote. But Papa gets the mail. He must have torn up your letters. I never saw them. What about the Dan Carter? Got himself a real look at him. What's past is past. All we're interested in now is the present. The present and the future. That's what you're up to. 
half to try to make trouble. His real look has got herself a real ornery old man if I'm any judge. Talk, Tony, let go of me. Behave yourself, will you? Act your way. Mr. Carney, maybe our luck has changed. Come on. Please, don't stop me. We saw what happened. We're friends of Dan's. We want to help you. Since you disapprove of rodeos and the people in them, I suggest you leave. Stella! Stella! Me and Stella. Flora will do anything we can. Come on. All right, where have you hidden her this time? I didn't hide her before, I have not. I didn't hide her this time. You humiliated her, so she probably just slipped away. You better slip home soon. Because I'm holding you responsible. You see your leave? No. I wish I had. I'm worried. So am I. Let's go look for him. Honestly, there's no reason for you two to get mixed up in this. Of course there is, hon. Dan's our best friend. All we've ever heard from him is how fond he is of you. Did he really say that, honestly? He never stops talking about you. He even told us what an ornery cuss your father is. Papa's not ornery. He just can't see anyone's point of view but his own. I know what you mean. My father was the same way. That's why we understand and want to help you. But what can you do? I can't hide away in your hotel room forever. No. But we could help you get to another town if you want. Sure. And then we can tell Dan and he can come and get you. I was only sure that he would. That he wanted to. We know he wants to. Look, you think it over. Tucson and I'll go get you something to eat. We'll be back in a few minutes. Flora, I think we got troubles enough of our own. Maybe they're over. Did you notice her old man? Forty dollars steps and that takes to narrow. He looks like real money to me. Right. So we help his daughter run away and he just gives us all that money out of gratitude. Hmm? I don't get you, Flora. Don't even try. Leave the thinking to me. You just string along. Don't you see, Della? My sister lives in Durango, where we play next week. You can stay with her till we get there. Sure. Me and Flora and Dan. It'll be like you're, well, hidden out waiting for us. I just can't thank you two enough. Oh, forget it. Maybe Dan will let me be best man at the wedding. Huh? Oh, tarnation, Della. You're closed. All you have is what you're wearing. And my sister's twice her size. Now, wait a minute. What about the clothes she has at home? You think Pop is going to just give them to you so I can run away? Maybe he won't have to. Suppose Tucson and I wait till he's asleep. You describe the layout of the rooms to us, and we'll get your clothes anyway. You can't do that. Keep the house locked up. Just to protect your clothes? Of course not. It's the money he has in the house. Well, you just tell us where he keeps the money so we don't set off any burglar alarms and we'll manage to get your clothes somehow. What if you two should get caught? Oh, he'll have to run a lot faster than we do. And uh, from what I saw this afternoon, he just ain't in training. <laughs> well, I backtracked every place we were this afternoon. Beats me, Lawson. Wasn't Dan Carter with you? Yeah. Poor guy must really be in love with Della. Said something about riding out to her place to see if she got home. Lucky, Penny, I think I ran onto something. What? Well, just as I was almost to Caraway's livery stable, a rig drove up with two people in it. A man, that bruiser shoved me because my lemonade spilled, and a woman. This woman, Della? No, the man's wife, I guess. Well, anyhow, when I asked Mr. Caraway what happened and what they wanted, he said that they asked direction to the fourth side ranch. Nice work, Tag. This will outfit your baseball team for the next two years. You wait right here for us. Okay, sir.
So you're a thief, too. Mr. Forsythe, there was a rig outside, and I came in. I thought it might be this pair, Mr. Forsythe, and I'd gamble they have your money, and probably your daughter. Well, once we get them into a private room in my hotel, you got an idea we'll find out a lot. Just think, Annie. If you and Lofty hadn't ridden out, they'd have gotten away. Let's not leave Tag out of this. He did some mighty fine detective work. All I did was to put two and two together. Well, how about you, Mr. Forsythe, putting one and one together? With a father and a husband, I don't think Della will ever get into trouble. Well, I gotta admit, I've been saving the 1,500 acres on the east side of my ranch to raise me some grandchildren. It's not that I'm unappreciative, Mr. Forsythe, but it's all right with Della another six months with the rodeo, and I'll have enough saved up for our own place. What? You're turning down $5,000 worth of fine grazing land? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't mean to be an old I told you so, Mr. Forsythe, but I guess there's some pretty upstanding young men in the rodeo business after all. Well, I guess if a man's a man, it doesn't make much difference what business he's in. That goes for you too, young fella. If that fresh-made lemonade business of yours needs a little help, I think maybe I can arrange a small loan. 
Tag doesn't need a loan, Mr. Forsythe. But his baseball team could use a sponsor and some new equipment. And wait a minute. We'd better wait and see if you have enough money after you've paid for the wedding. <laughs>